Hey guys, in this video we're going to go over bevelers and some proper technique on how to bevel. Uh, if you've watched any of our other videos then you've probably seen that beveling is one of those steps that gets reproduced almost every single time you go about doing a leather working project uh, if it starts off with veg tan leather. Uh, so you'll see I have quite a few bevelers. Um, these are basically the ones I use in my shop. There's actually a lot more out there, lots of different styles and preferences. Um, but for the most part, they all follow a very similar kind of theme. Um, most all of them will have uh, two prongs or forks out in the front uh, with a cutting edge in between the two. These two forks are actually used for uh, guides to sit on each side of a leather corner so it can rest like so. You want the guides equal, equidistant uh, across this corner um, so that this cutting edge can glide along this, this corner to peel it off. Um, and release this little streamer, basically. Um, so what you're trying to go for here is kind of a uh, hexagonal edge instead of a squared off edge. Um, and that way you're getting one step closer to uh, being able to be rounded, uh, which is the next step with the burnishing wheel. Um, on all bevelers, there's different sizes. Each beveler's size is depicted by a number that's on the uh, one side or another of each beveler. They're kind of in different places depending on the different style. Um, and the larger the number, the wider the space is between the forks. Um, that allows you to bevel on thicker pieces of leather uh, with the, the larger num numbers and make real small bevels with the smaller numbers. Um, some of it's personal preference, how big of a bite you want to take off of it. Uh, but generally speaking, you know, if you've got a, a size 2 like you see on this one, um, the, the thickness you would be using it on would be like 5 to 7, uh, whereas this is one has a 5 on it, which once you're getting to that point, you're looking at like 10 to 12 ounce leather, uh, quite a bit thicker stuff. So in beveling, you always want to bevel away from you, and you want to straddle these two forks on the corner, and bevel parallel to your hand. If you don't want to go this direction, a lot of times if it becomes like there's resistance or whatnot, you have a tendency to kind of want to squeeze together. But if this slips off and gets you under the fingernail or something, you won't want to do any more leather work. So always make sure that you're beveling parallel to your hand. Straddle the corner and push away. And it should peel off this little streamer that you can see here. Now this is a number five, so it's taking a pretty big bite out of it. Whereas if I were to switch over to one of the smaller ones, like the number two, uh, the bite it would take is substantially smaller. So just depending on how much uh, curvature you want to get like on the rounded edge, how much actual work you want to do with the slicker, um, you can see the kind of the size difference in the, in the two bites. But uh, you want to do front and back. The back side's almost always a little harder to actually bevel. Uh, the resistance is a little greater, but if you've got a sharp uh, beveler, it should still just peel it right off uh, and leave you with this little uh, streamer and a hexagonal kind of shaped edge that uh, will now be ready, ready for, for burnishing um, to make that smooth edge. Well, I hope this was helpful, guys. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this one, we'll be doing several more on the different tools we use in the workshop. Uh, if you have any further questions, more specifically, or comments, be sure to leave them below and I'll answer them as best I can. And we'll see you next time.